Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, and today I'm gonna make the ultimate prime rib roast Christmas dinner. And I'm gonna do it over a campfire in a snowstorm, and it's gonna be so easy. Check this out, guys. Let me show you our main course. Boom, a 10 pound prime rib roast. This is a very intimidating piece of meat to cook for a lot of people, even in a conventional oven, but I'm gonna show you a super easy way to do it. It's a technique called sous vide. If you go to a nice steakhouse, lots of the steaks are done sous vide style, which is basically you cook the meat in a hot water bath and then you sear it to caramelize the outside and it gives you the most perfectly consistent, medium to medium rare inside. But you know what? You don't need any fancy equipment to do sous vide. You can do it with a cooler, and I'm gonna show you how. All right, first things first, we're gonna season this beef, then I'm gonna show you how to set up the sous vide bath. All right, got some thyme, got some rosemary, rock salt, honey Dijon mustard, and pepper. With all the snow falling on the meat, it's hard to tell whether I put enough salt on it. So, you know, just do your best. <laughs> there we go, that looks well seasoned. Now I'm gonna take the honey Dijon. Just kinda wanna pat it on, cause you don't wanna disrupt the seasonings. Could be the hypothermia speaking, but this already smells amazing. Now we're gonna turn this up to redneck level 1000 here. We are going to put this whole thing in a garbage bag. Now normally, you vacuum seal your meat before you put it in the sous vide bath. We ain't got no vacuum sealer. So, we are gonna take our cooler here, which is full of not so hot water here, and we're gonna submerge the meat, and that's gonna squeeze the air out. And we're gonna twist this sucker, and I'm gonna take a twisty tie. I am going to seal off this bag so water doesn't get inside and ruin all my seasoning. Little fun fact, garbage bags and clean wrap don't melt until 200 degrees. We're gonna sous vide bath at 140, so we're good. Now we gotta get out our pot and start boiling some water. Now you don't need potable water to do this. You can pull any old nasty water out of the lake and use it to cook your meat because it's not gonna come in contact with the meat and you're gonna boil it. Obviously, if you're doing this with a steak or a single rib roast, it would be a lot less water needed, but I'm doing a four bone rib roast, which serves about eight to 10 people. So I'm gonna need a lot of water. All right, we got the water boiling. Now the ideal internal temperature for beef is 121 Fahrenheit. And in order to sous vide that, you need about 10 degrees warmer. So about 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. When you first put that 10 pound roast in, the temperature is gonna drop dramatically. So you wanna start a little higher than ideal at about 160. If you're trying to use this technique on smaller piece of meats, it's the same temperatures, you just need a lot less water. If you have a thermometer, great. Otherwise, use your hand. If you put your hand in and it feels comfortable, you're about 110 to 100. If you put your hand in and it burns immediately, you're over 160. You wanna be able to put your whole hand in like this and hold it for the, about the count of one or two before it hurts. And that puts you at about 150, 140. The bigger and thicker the piece of meat, the longer it needs to sit in the sous vide bath. So a massive prime rib roast like that sucker, a 10 pounder, uh, six to eight hours is what I expect. Now, it's not a big deal if you let it sit in the bath a little bit longer than it needs, but it's a big deal if you underdo it. So, you know, it's a little forgiving with sous vide. Now, if I was using personal steaks, I'd probably only need two hours in the sous vide bath. I did some scientific testing last night and that cheapo little Coleman cooler right there, when you fill it with 140 degree water, it loses 10 degrees of temperature every two and a half hours. Now mind you, it's 32 degrees outside right now. So in summer conditions, it's gonna do better. So every two and a half hours, I'm gonna need to dump in some boiling water to keep that temperature up. All right, that's about 160. 
Let's see how accurate my fingers are here. That's 150. All right, we'll let that sit for about two and a half hours. We'll come back and check the temp. Even though cooking sous vide style takes a lot of hours, it doesn't take a lot of energy or fuel. You just kind of let it sit in the cooler and go about your business for the next two and a half hours. And then you boil a pot of water. It's pretty simple. So while that beef is soaking and cooking, me and Tommy are out here sledding and enjoying the snow. Well guys, it's been seven and a half hours and the cooler's maintained its temperature really well, so I've only had to add water twice. But the weather's gone to heck in a handbasket. I am freezing, I am wet, I am muddy and cold, and I don't wanna cook in this weather anymore. So, I am gonna go ahead and just sous vide this thing overnight. I can sous vide it for 15 hours instead of six or eight, and it really don't matter. That's the beauty of sous vide, it's very forgiving. As long as you don't underdo it, you can do it for 24 hours if you want. So that's what we're gonna do. And uh, we're gonna pick this up in the morning. Well, good morning. It's 28 degrees and that fire feels very good. Our prime rib roast has been soaking in the hot sous vide bath for 18 hours now. So I'm gonna go top off some hot water on the bath, get it back up to temperature, and uh, we're gonna start cooking the rest of our meal. The cooler's been holding its temperature a lot better than I expected. I got it up to 150 degrees last night before going to bed. It's now about nine hours later, and it's 118 degrees still. So that's pretty darn good. But I'm gonna get the temperature back up to about a 140 range while I make the rest of our meal. One thirty nine. Good enough. These little battery powered meat thermometers are about fifteen, nineteen dollars on Amazon.com. I've got russet potatoes wrapped in tin foil here. We're just going to lay these things in the coal. Next, I've got a little pot here with some water in it. I got a bag of dried cranberries or craisins. Look at that. Perfect start to boil these craisins and they plump up and then they start to break down and turn into jelly. It's gonna make an awesome cranberry sauce. Hold on. As the cranberry sauce simmers, just keep stirring it and stirring it until it turns into this thick, rich cranberry sauce. getting a little hungry here. Ooh. Wow. It takes about an hour, hour and a half for the potato to be perfectly done through, but oh, it's so good. We're just gonna have a little snack here before the main course. We got plenty of potato. We are going to cut up some bacon. We're gonna cook up some Brussels sprouts and I'm cutting them so that they'll cook more thoroughly in the frying pan and you cut them long ways because if you do that, they'll stay together. If you cut them uh, short ways, the leaves and stuff fall apart. The Brussels sprouts take a while to cook, so you want a lower temperature, and you don't want to fuss with them too much. Just stick them in the pan, cover them in grease, let them sit. Bacon fried Brussels sprouts. Once the carrots start to get soft, then we add the honey. Woo! We want them bendy, not mushy. All right. I just pull these off the heat and let them sit. All right, cooler's at 126. Roast has been in for 21 hours. Let's pull it out and see what we got. Garbage bag doesn't have any water in it, so it didn't leak. 
just a big bag of gravy right now. It's beautiful. Look at all that gravy right there. We want to flame lick the meat and make it caramelize on the outside to give it that beautiful color and crispy texture on the outside. Not cooking the meat, just caramelizing the outside. Now check my string, make sure I'm not killing it. You soak the string in water before you do this, it'll keep it from burning. She's a beauty. Oh. Prime rib roast, baked potato, honey glazed carrots, Brussels sprouts and bacon, cranberry sauce. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Moment of truth. Oh, oh, a little. Look at that. Well, this is a little bit closer to a medium than I would have preferred, but it's still got quite a bit of pink in it, so I'm happy with this. But look how consistent the color is. If you bake this in a conventional oven, it'll be really done out here and underdone in here. But because you use a sous vide bath, it's just consistent throughout. Every mouthful will be the same. And this is pretty darn good. There's Christmas dinner right there. Doesn't that look amazing? Oh, the smell is incredible, guys. Now obviously a lot of you guys aren't going to go out and cook a $200 prime rib roast over a campfire. But if you enjoy a good fried piece of meat over a campfire, seriously consider sous viding it. You know, just bring a cooler, boil some water, put the meat in a Ziploc bag, boom! And you'll have a perfectly done steak. It's pretty amazing. But enough talk, I'm going to eat this thing. Oh, oh this looks amazing. One nice thing about cooking in cold weather like this, you don't have to let the meat rest very long. Woo mm. Oh, that is so good. Mm. Oh, that just melts in your mouth. Well, I think I should wash this down with some sparkling raspberry apple juice. <sighs> oh. 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 Well, Merry Christmas, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more campfire cooking videos, we got a ton of them, and I'll put links in the description. I did a beef bone broth stew from scratch. I've shown you guys how to make homemade bread from scratch and bake it over a campfire, and I've got my favorite, like, 23 campfire recipes that are just killer for more practical recipes. Hope you enjoy this. Don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.